Hello everyone, I'm back. It's uh, about three and a half weeks since the operation now, so I'm getting out and about a little bit. Uh, a success, I'll show you the, uh, the scars and etc. in a moment. First of all, I just want to do some thanks, especially to Diane and Byron, my son, who've kept the garden ticking over and a lot of harvesting has been done so well done you two and also thanks to all those people who have sent me some very nice kind words I do appreciate it and we will try and get back to you as soon as we can now then we've come down to the shed because I haven't got my Christmas potatoes in yet everybody else should have theirs in by now as it's going to be a little late so there might be New Year but they are sprutting, obviously they should have gone in three weeks ago, they're sprutting very well. So hopefully they'll do a little bit of catch up. So let's pop these in now and just show you the the knee and the scars etc. It's healing up very nicely now. Still a lot of exercises and stretching to do but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now we're going to put these new, well they're actually second early potatoes the charlotte which is the second early now we're going to put them in these bags that are specially made for this job proper grow bags compost i'm using is good quality compost and with about 50 percent mini bark added to it just to open it up a little bit and then i've put the potato fertilizer into it as well now the potatoes as you can see the the they look like spiders don't they they're well chitted because we kept them in the fridge too long and they started to grow but once they're in the bag and they'll get warm through they'll be up in no time at all so i'm going to put five of those into a bag i've half filled with the compost already these two have been done and i'll just show you because they're well spotted i'll be a bit careful with them But they, you could break some of these off if you wanted but because we need them quite quickly at Christmas we'll leave them on and then hopefully get more potatoes although they will be smaller. Now I've put the potatoes in as a five pattern and I'm just going to put this container of compost on top, level it off, water it and then as soon as the break surface will start filling up again. Now we just pop that in. There you go, we'll put it all in. Then just half firm. Those people who's already got theirs up and growing nicely, mine won't be long. <laughs> the other thing I need to do is get caught up with doing the cleaning and putting the onions on the strings and we're just timing it right to go in the shed because it's just starting to rain. Now I've started cleaning some of the onions as you can see there's still quite a few still to do and I've kept them in the new greenhouse at the bottom of the garden which is done wonderfully well so it gets lovely and warm in there and it really has dried them out nicely. This is how they come out of the garden and all I do, I don't force the skins off but if it wants to come off I take it off and if, it, if it's loose then it will come off later anyway so there's no need to sit peeling and peeling and then yeah that's plenty and then I just do just about the length of my fist in a bit at the top and then take that little bit off there. I just take the the old roots off with the scissors, look, tidy it up. And that's it, that's really you can keep peeling and peeling. Now if you peel them and it if you peel them down it shows a lot of green, that's fine. That'll turn brown in a few days, providing you get the light to it. So if they get too much green, try and give them some light and they'll soon turn brown. Now there's a, 
one of the small red ones that will do the same. If I just go round, that's that's enough. For it. And they're not for showing; they are for storing. So we're looking out for any marks or problems with them and especially white rot which I'm going to show you in a moment we've got a bit of white rot so I'm going to show you that same again that it's the fist in a bit and then just tidy those roots up and that's ready for storing that's a good onion that's a good onion I'll just take you through some onions let's do this one now we've got it now. That's a beautiful onion for storing, that is. That's nice. Just take those few roots off. And fist in a bit. Here we are. That's ready for stringing. I get rid of the mess. And just to show you what I'm looking out for, if you look at that one, look, it's put another onion on the side of it. Nothing wrong, that will go up to the house and that will be used straight away. It's a good sound onion, so that's fine. Likewise this one, look, it's peeled bad. It's got a big lump on the side where it was growing another onion at the side. But that's, that'll be used straight away, that's fine. This one, I've chose this one because when I was cleaning it, I could feel the, the stem or the top of the onion is still a little bit damp so that one I take back down the greenhouse and put it in the sun because it's not quite ready for storage yet and this one that's about the limit to what I use for stringing I won't do anything bigger than that anything bigger than that we put in these mushroom trays that way up cut tops off and they'll they'll be used first if you like they don't what i find was that really big onions don't quite store as well as this sort of size that's that's nice onion another thing i want to show you is this year is the amount of white rot we've been getting i popped some gloves on because i don't want to touch it and i don't want it near the other onion so we keep it on the bag and then we'll put it in the incinerator now the white rot, as you can see, is actually a soil borne. Now, if you grow onions in the same place year after year, you will get this white rot in the bottom. Now this year we've had a lot, a lot of white rot on the onions. And they're all the, the sets that we brought in. Now, I know for a fact that no alliums have grown in that plot for at least the last four years. So I believe that this white rot has come in on the sets. So next year, I'm not buying any sets. I'm going to grow my own onions from seed. I'll set them early and then put them out. Well, let's open it up and have a look what it looks like inside. Shall we? It's very soft on the outside. So what you find is as you pull them up, the roots come away quite easily like that and leave that scarring. That's, uh, that's how you'll see it. And then there is like a white powder on the surface of the soil where they was growing. There you are. Can you see where it's come in the bottom? And it's slowly worked its way up through the onion. And it's just beginning to appear at the top now, so the neck would rot as well. Now that's a, a waste of a good onion. And it, it just makes me cross when you put all the work in and you rotate your crops. To get white rot which is probably from another reason now i'm just going to show you how i string my onions now we have done this oh must be 
three times now so Diane will put the uh, information on the screen so you can go and look how we used to do it and then I'll do one in here it doesn't take long to do I'll just push these through for you first of all I use cord not string this is cord I don't know if you can see it. blue this year last year it was yellow but blue cord and I've knotted it together so it doesn't come apart and I've made into a double loop up so there's four strings coming down and then what I do this is the one we'll put on the bottom first so we just make a double loop and pop that on and pull it quite tight I'll put the knots at the bottom because I don't want the knots at the top while I'm while I'm up there. Okay, and then we hang it. You want a good sturdy hook to hang them on because there's when you get a few onions on there's quite a bit of weight on them. And this tail, you just put it through, back through, but not the ones you came through before. Look like that, you see? and we just put it off and then we what I do I sort of grade the onions so the larger at the bottom and as they get further up they get a little bit smaller 12 onions on there it should be plenty so we just take them don't forget to make sure they're nice and dry and just open those two up Push it through, sit it on where you want it, and then instead of thinking, oh, I'll go around the top, don't go around the top, go around the bottom, and then through on a different, different uh, pair like that, so it holds, yeah? We do four to a, a line, so it holds nice. Again, like, instead of going through there where that one was, we'll open it and we'll go through a different one, you see? Push them down, go under, back up and through again. And then tighten down. Remember, if you've got a good hook up there, you'll be able to put some weight on your, on your line, okay? And just take that off. We're going underneath when it's finished and you come to cut the onions off it doesn't unfold and drop more onions it holds itself together nicely so let's put another one in let's take the spin out first so let's go in there I think let's go round one to make it tidy so there's there's our four going to be like that we go under don't forget under round and then through again and then press down it's actually better when you're doing it quicker remember that one was our bottom onion so we want one in there now don't we let's select one off and somewhere that's a bit too big this one will do nicely. A bit of white on it, but that'll brown up, don't worry. So I'll spit it this way for a moment. Push it through. Get it balanced nicely so it's all hanging tidy, look. Yeah? Then pop it underneath the onion, back up and through. Push it down, well. and just take that loose tail off there you are it's beginning now the next four we put on will be into there so I'll put the next layer on the four and then I'll come back to you there you are that's the next four on and now we'll put four more on top of there there's the spaces one two three four and there's the four we'll use. They're more or less the same size. But it's not... Uh, it 
makes it look better if you get them all the same. So I try to go under rather than over though, because it does hold the onion on better. And then keep them tight. As you get going, you'll be able to tuck the loose end into the onions, providing it's dry. If it's anything like damp, don't cut it off. Or take it down and re-dry it. So one, two, under it goes, look, and then through, and then press it down nicely. That one's got a long tail on it, look, let's take that off. Remember to keep an eye on how you're doing down there. That's fine, so we want one, two on there. Try not to go through the same two pieces of string, try and keep it going. Something like. And underneath, and back, and pull. Press down nice and tight. Long one there, so we'll snip that off. And I think one on here somewhere. There you go. If they're a bit smaller, don't forget to let them come out a little bit to keep the to keep it running nice and neat. And then snip off, press down. There you are. So we've got four more and that should be enough on there because you're getting quite a weight on those and by using four pieces of cord you know that the cord won't snap if you use string I think if over time as you store them the string does tend to snap I'll just put these four on quickly now and so we have done it several times but always remember to go under your onion then over it makes them easier to cut off when you come in to fetch them and you'll find that there's always the biggest onions disappear first. So underneath and then just go. There you go. Press it down. And snip. By going a fraction smaller every time, it makes the makes the finished uh, string look a bit better. And go under and through. Right. We got some quite long onions now, so we'll cut them off. One more on there. Look, I think that we'll go through those two there. And go underneath, round, through, press it down, and there you are. You could actually put some really small ones on there. I've got some small reds, but you imagine these as small, small brown onions. You could keep going. But the problem is, you're getting quite a weight on there now. So I think 12, 14 onions is plenty. So that's just a, a quick demo on how I string my onions. Diane will put the long video on if you want to see it. Another job that Diane's done for me is she's started to pick the blotty beans. They're very pretty. Another little job that Diane and Byron have done for me is, while I've been laid up is they've took the top or the horns off the potatoes so the skins will now harden up in a couple of weeks. The horns are there drying ready for burning. We'll harvest and then we'll have one burn and clean the land. My son and my son-in-law have both been helping me dig the potatoes up. I quite like standing and watching with my sticks telling them what to do. <laughs> I could get used to that. Do have a go at stringing some onions. It's well worth it. And also, if you think, when you've got them all lined up in your shed or you can actually hang them in your pantry, they look quite nice. and. 
the also you can do the same with your garlic now if you're using hard neck garlic it's quite difficult to tie in because they're a bit brittle so if you've got soft neck they go on the same as the onion but the hard neck you might have to put a bit of raffia around and just pin them in with the raffia but they do look nice when they're hung now that'll be it for this week my legs are aching <laughs> I need to go and sit down next week I'll take you for a tour of the garden show you how things have planned out while I've been off we also need to put some winter lettuce and some we can put some more radish in and we can put some uh, spring onions we'll use guardsmen they're quite winter hardy so we'll put those in as well next week and have a start and have a good tidy up and but that's next week we'll show you then so many many thanks for watching many thanks for subscribing we do appreciate and a special thank you to diane and byron and mark for helping me in the garden and also a very special thank you for all you kind people that sent me good wishes. So hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.